evening. Um, so I don't know how well you can uh, see me. As you can see, it's almost dark. It's not completely dark. Um, but this is going to be a short video where I'm going to try and shoot the ISS, the International Space Station, flying over uh, Ely Cathedral, which you can see behind me. I've done a similar shot a few times before, but uh, it's always fun to have another go. Um, there's two space station passes tonight. Um, this one's going to be just after 10 o'clock. Um, it's just coming up to 10 now, so I'll be ready to go in uh, in a couple of minutes. Um, the sky is still quite light, so it's quite tricky to balance the exposure. We can't just do a sort of long two-minute shot because the sky will completely burn out, so it's going to be a series of smaller shots or shorter shots at sort of 15 seconds each. I think I've got it set to at the moment. Um, ISO 100, about f6.3, I'll show you the camera settings, um, and hopefully we'll pick it up. It should be a pretty bright pass, um, but I'm not going to do the later pass because I need to be up at 6 o'clock for work. Um, anyway, we'll grab the images and then I'll, uh, I'll do a second part of this video showing the actual processing steps that I take to put that together into the final picture as well. So you can see there the view uh, from the back of the camera. Um, it's obviously a bit brighter than uh, than reality, but uh, but yeah, 15 seconds f6.3, um, ISO 100. Um, overall, that looks about right. Um, I think it's a little bit uh, sort of 10 minutes later from when I set it, so I may just to simplify things for later, pop us up to 20 seconds. So I've got a bit of room on the exposure there. Um, I think that should work and it'll just be slightly less shots to stack together later and uh, I think the space station should sort of appear from behind the cathedral and move over to the left above it if I plan this correctly. Uh, anyway, I shall stop talking um, and start the shutter going because it should be appearing in the next minute or two. definitely got darker. Um, anyway, uh, so it's just flown over. Um, fairly bright, but um, it is against a sort of slightly twilighty sky. Um, but yeah, it looked on the back of the camera and I have picked it up. I did drop the aperture um, open a bit more to 5.6. Um, if you're wondering why such small apertures, that's my little Voigtlander 15mm lens. And the smallest it goes is 4.5 anyway. Um, I like to stop down a little bit for added sharpness. Um, but yep, yeah, definitely visible on the back of the camera. So um, I guess head home and then have a look at the images, stick them all together and um, try and pull out the details as best we can. Right, so here's all the images that were taken. You'll see there's 10 altogether. Um, and if we zoom right in, you can just see the uh, beginnings of the space station there and throughout each image it slowly moves up through the screen until on the final tenth image it's there disappearing out of the frame. And I'm going to do some basic uh, basic changes to these just to begin with before stacking them together. Uh, so first thing I'll do is set the landscape processing option or profile, hit auto just to brighten it up and the other thing I'm going to do is also turn off the lens correction which seems counterintuitive the reason for that is because I've noticed in the past when stacking several images if lens correction is turned on um, it sort of leaves a weird banding pattern across the image um, which is obviously undesirable so do that and the other thing is to uh, set a standard white balance so as this was taken during daylight or be it dusk um, I'll pick the daylight white balance and I can then select all these images and synchronize all of the settings across them and you'll see they all update which does make the uh, space station stand out a little bit more but we can make it a little bit brighter in the next step as well. But the next thing to do is to bring all these into Photoshop 
to stack them. To do that, right click, edit in and opens layers in Photoshop. Uh, don't do edit in Photoshop because it opens them as separate images. So all the images are now um, opened up in Photoshop as layers, as you can see. Um, by default, all we'll see is the top layer, which is the, um, I guess looking at it, probably the first image in the set, but the order doesn't particularly matter. Um, but to see them all, all we need to do is select all of the layers apart from the bottom one, and then change the blending mode to lighten. And you can now see we have the uh, the full trail there. Because these images were taken one after another, there will actually be the tiniest little gap between them. So what I will do is flatten the image. So that uh, sort of merges it all back down into one layer. And if we now zoom in and just go up to the top here, you'll see this tiny little gap, which is uh, where it was basically between the pictures that the camera was taking. And they're easy enough to fill in. We just pick the um, spot healing tool and draw over there and it's done. And we can just uh, repeat that process quickly. To be honest, once you get a fair way down, the gaps are barely noticeable anyway. So that one is probably okay. And the other thing I think is just over here is a bit of a nasty uh, dust spot, which I've not previously spotted. We could get rid of that in Lightroom, but um, we may as well do it while we're in here. So we can just uh, paint over that and it's gone. So uh, that's the uh, that's the steps in Photoshop. They're fairly straightforward and we can take this back into Lightroom for some final processing. So yeah, back in Lightroom. Um, not a huge amount to do really here. I'll just uh, re-hit auto, just to see that brightens it up a little bit. Um, and then I will just enhance it with a little bit of texture. And clarity, not too much, because I don't want the clarity to start uh, giving me weird halos around the top of the building there. Um, so maybe a bit more texture. And then we'll just sort of repeat that on the, uh, on the sky portion of the image. So, Drop that down, and again, just uh, add a bit more texture just to bring out the details of the uh, of the stars and the and the space station. Um, the other thing to do is it probably needs a slight bit of leveling. I think it's sinking down on the left hand side slightly. So bring up the crop tool and just uh, straighten it a smidge. And I also just want to crop off these little bits of trees here because. They're slightly distracting. Okay, and there we go. That's probably about it. So like I said, when I was uh, shooting the images last night, um, obviously taking one long exposure of several minutes, um, you could do that if it was um, actually dark, but this was sort of twilight, dusk time. Not really possible because the sky would be too bright. So uh, that's why we end up stacking the images in this way has the added advantage as well that it kind of reduces noise in the final image. Um, and as you see, it's pretty easy just to put them together in Photoshop um, and just change the layer mode. The main thing is to make sure your camera's on a tripod, of course. Um, other than that, pretty easy. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. Um, let me know what you think of the final image. Um, and if you've got any other techniques when you've tried similar things yourself, by all means drop a note down in the comments. Always interested to know. Um, and I will see you again soon.